but I'm going to tell you uh, an interesting story or saga, as I sometimes refer to it, of a business deal and how we put it together and how it went forward and how it ended up. And I'm going to tell you the things I did right, and I'm going to tell you the things I did wrong. And there were a few of each. We'll let you kind of judge those. But I think it's a, there's a, an important lesson here for uh, a lot of people, particularly on the things I did wrong, in that there are no better lessons learned than the ones that other people learn for you the hard way. Let them take the lumps. You're going to get to benefit from my lumps. Uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about i3 Technology Group. I think we are somewhat different in the world of asterisk uh, uh, integrators, in that we are, or were, a Nortel channel partner. We come from a background of traditional telephony. And that world uh, was what we were used to. We had a, a, a large uh, customer base, uh, uh, over 200 uh, Nortel implementations that we were supporting, including some very large ones. Uh, we had a couple of Fortune 500 companies, so over 1,000 extensions. We've been supporting them for quite some time. Now, we hadn't actually built those customers. We had inherited them. But uh, we were used to large-scale uh, uh, systems. We started developing Asterisk in-house as a, uh, uh, a new offering several years ago. And as we went forward with that, as we went forward with that, we had uh, a number of successes with uh, uh, implementations used in a, a one hardware platform and a specific distribution, our own front end that we wrote and put together. And, and um, uh, we were like a, a lot of new Asterisk uh, integrators. Uh, we, had, we had some successes. We had a couple that were a little tough, and that was part of that learning process. We finally reached a conclusion that we needed what we'd had with Nortel. We needed, we needed that support layer above the support uh, our, our, ourselves. We needed uh, uh, that, that 800 number you could call and have somebody to, to uh, uh, answer the questions uh, rather than you having to pound it out in the lab. And we needed somebody other than just me. <laughs> So after a lot of research, we selected and went with Zorcom and became a Zorcom channel partner. And we uh, we had uh, named our, our in-house development the i3CS, or communication server, but now we've went to the i3CPBX, complete PBX system. Ah, come right on in. We were, we were a little lonely. Um, that gave us that extra layer of support, and not just one layer, but an additional three layers. Um, currently, Zorcom has personnel in Cookville, Tennessee, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and, and uh, when, when you really need their help, the, the folks in Israel are ready to step up. That put us in a position to really uh, pursue uh, a, a lot more uh, asterisk implementations. We found ourselves facing a, a, a challenge, an opportunity, with Grand Crown Resorts of Branson, Missouri. Now, Grand Crown Resorts is, um, a large uh, and pretty complicated uh, company that is in the uh, business of uh, timeshare, travel package, and entertainment event marketing. They have 12 locations in six cities in three states and were primarily a Nortel, uh, a Nortel implementation. They found themselves, as so many customers did, facing some challenges there. Now, they operate the Carriage Place condominiums in Branson, the Surrey Inn uh, Motor Hotel in Branson, Grand Crown uh, uh, lo location in Branson, the lodges at Table Rock Lake, and they are nice, nice, nice. I recommend them highly if you're looking for a, a vacation destination. Now, they also operate the lodges of the Great Smoky Mountains, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, that's outside of Dollywood, and the Ocean View Vacation Villas in Biloxi, Mississippi. You can, get, uh, you can go and get your gamble on there. Now, the opportunity uh, they found themselves facing a challenge with uh, their Nortel system was end of life. Uh, they were going to have to spend a phenomenal amount of money to bring it up to a standard where they could continue to buy support. Um, they looked at that and said, 
it's just not worth the money to, to, uh, to spend to kick this can down the road further um, for the feature set and the age of the equipment. So they began a, a search for other, uh, other systems and we're looking at doing something that's kind of rare, a complete forklift. Now a little bit about their primary location which is Branson, Missouri. Branson, Missouri is a great place, it's a fun place. It's a vacation destination in the Ozark Mountains of Missouri uh, and it is, uh, largely was developed around uh, an 1880s theme park, Silver Dollar City. Some of you my age may remember Silver Dollar City being promoted on a certain television show from the late 60s, the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, that uh, really brought it to national attention and ever since then it's continued and is very popular. Um, the Branson has uh, developed a lot of ways since then. Uh, a lot of different types of uh, uh, attractions there now. And they proudly uh, claim to uh, be the um, live music show capital of the world with over 50 music theaters. We found ourselves coming to the game a little bit late. The folks at uh, Grand Crown had been looking for some time to replace their entire system. They uh, were, were looking at all the big players when we came, uh, came across this opportunity and started talking with them. And they were very cordial, nice people and were, were willing to listen to us um, and, and allowed us to present our, our asterisk implementation. But frankly, they weren't taking us serious. They, they didn't really think asterisk could do what they needed to do. They didn't feel like it could scale uh, and they were particularly concerned about their large analog arrays uh, in that uh, the, their condominiums all had uh, a significant investment in analog telephone sets. So they wanted to uh, continue uh, providing analog dial tone to all of those uh, and, and weren't interested in, in spending the money to put in IP phone sets in, the, in a range of uh, you know, eight to nine hundred additional sets. So we went in, in and presented and I have to admit that when we went in to do that presentation, uh, Mr. Brian Carpenter and myself, we had kind of a there's nothing to lose attitude in that, as I say, they weren't taking us very seriously. So we went in and, and we brought every dog and pony we had and we're going to put on the whole show. Um, I started off that presentation uh, with a, a, a question that I now use in, in all of our asterisk uh, presentations. It's a rhetorical question that I use again and again and Brian is probably tired of hearing it now. But basically, I always ask, how does an entire industry in lockstep adopt a business model that their customers universally hate? And that is seat licensing. I've been on the other side of the desk. I didn't like seat licensing. If, uh, if, you, if you ever find a customer that, that likes seat licensing, give me a call. I'd, I'd like to get acquainted. But I could see that that, that struck a chord. So we went through our presentation. We showed each and every feature, every bell, every whistle on our, on our i3 uh, complete PBX system. And as we'd go, th go through them, again, nothing to lose. They weren't taking, uh, taking us serious before. I'd just point out uh, this feature, the, the uh, uh, ACD groups, Qs. This is an expensive feature on any other uh, traditional telephone system. On the i3 CPBX, we're gonna charge you a seat license of zero dollars. And the next feature, and the charge for this will be zero dollars. Until eventually, I had them chiming in. They'd ask, how much is that? Zero dollars. <laughs> it, it became kind of humorous, and they were chuckling and laughing, but they were listening, and they were asking questions. And by the end of that presentation, we walked out of there with a customer that really was significantly interested and, and was going to let us go ahead and present a quote. Now, that created a a challenge. They didn't want us to quote the way we wanted to quote. We wanted to quote using their wide area network to uh, interconnect all the phone systems, but they said no, we want an apples to apples quote with Avaya, Shortel, Cisco, everybody else that's, that's going to be playing. So quote a forklift of the phone system that we have, which we looked at it and said okay and, and we put together those numbers. Uh, they had a phone system that incorporated uh, in Branson two Nortel 61Cs, two Nortel 11Cs, um, four point-to-point -point PRIs interconnecting those, 
the, the 11 C's didn't have any trunks. They got all their dial tone from the 261's. Um, and then they had, just kind of randomly uh, 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 interconnected, a Cisco call manager that was an attempt to go another direction that they had repented of. They had all this, and I'd call this a pretty hybrid uh, uh, system, uh, connected with very expensive point-to-point -point PRI trunks, which we told them was really not a great idea, but we quoted it that way. They also had locations that had um, a Vodave. They had a Nortel key system that weren't interconnected in any way. They had some locations that had Centrex lines still. They had locations that had just regular POTS lines. It was something less than an ideal telephone network. And, uh, but that was what they wanted us to quote. Please match this. We did, and we quoted that. <laughs> and it turned out to be a lot of fun. Uh, they, uh, they looked at, at all the numbers from all these other big players and ours. And you know, anytime you're quoting an asterisk system in that type of an environment, you know where you're going to come in on, on, the, on the pricing. You're going to be below all the monolithic uh, telephone players. And we were. In fact, uh, my favorite quote from the whole thing was uh, the CFO called in the uh, telecom manager and the IT director who would gathered these quotes, and he had our quote in his hand, and he says, damn it, we have to look at these people. We can buy two of theirs for the next closest price. He wasn't happy that he had to look at us. We were outside that comfort zone. We didn't match the world they were used to. But we, we had their interest. Now we had to earn that business. So that was a, a real challenge. We, um, we decided to do something that was a little unusual, we, and, and we offered to do, to do it since for other customers. It's something I'd recommend if you have the opportunity. We offered to put in a system at one of their locations and let them just use it. We offered to put it in side by side with an existing telephone system, let them run it, work it hard, see what it'll do. And they, cho they chose to go ahead and do that. Um, they really put off their decision making and stretch it out because we generated that level of interest, particularly with that pricing. So they chose their location in Springfield, Missouri. Now Springfield was a location with about 35, 40 telephones um, <laughs> for the management personnel. They were also operating a 120 seat uh, uh, outbound call center. Uh, and it was a hardcore telemarketing center. They, uh, they, they didn't let us touch that. In fact, we have not replaced that yet, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, we put in our, our Astros uh, 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 I3 CPBX and mounted it to the wall next to their Vodave, put phones on all their desks next to their existing key sets, and uh, brought them all up, and then simply moved the trunks from the one system to the other, and the old phones stopped ringing, the new ones started. They were impressed by that. Um, they, they were very pleased with a graceful cutover. So were we. Uh, we didn't necessarily expect things to go quite that easily, but they did. And uh, they just took their old phone sets because they thought they may have to go back to them and set them down in desk drawers and started using the new ones. Um, that was working really pretty well. Now, we had not promised to. We had not really let, out, let the, this plan out, but, we were, but uh, all along we thought it would be great if we could go ahead and trunk in this new system. This was a location that had never been part of their uh, telephone network before. So we, um, they, they had that, you may recall I mentioned, they had that Cisco call manager that was trunked to their Nortel core in Branson. And so we went ahead and, and, and tried what I call a Hail Mary trunk. We uh, just basically made a no credentials trunk to, to the, that uh, uh, Cisco and picked up a phone and dialed a, a number uh, on, on, on that uh, uh, other box. And it rang and somebody answered. That was the, uh, the, the occasion where you go, oh hi, and talk to them for a minute and then turn to the customer and say, I meant to do that. Even though we weren't really sure how it was going to go. Now, they did have to get their Cisco people involved to uh, do some routes for calls to go the other way, but suddenly their location in Branson, 50 miles away, uh, uh, was able to make phone calls to Springfield, which had before been intrastate long distance. 
they would never realized how much calling they did between those two locations and how much money they were spending. Within 30, 40 days, they got their first uh, uh, phone bill and were able to see the drop. And it was impressive. They became really interested then. Plus, the people in, in Springfield were so excited to be able to four-digit dial uh, Branson that uh, uh, all they could do was say nice things about it. Uh, I will also say that uh, we'd done a good job of, of, of um, uh, helping people to get used to the new phone system, always a challenge, and we could call this overall a success, though we did have a little struggle with some PRIs, things uh, switching from the Vodave, but overall it worked really well, very quickly. Now, we've now got them in a really difficult position. We've proven our point. It works. We're still different. We're still really different from what they were looking at and all the rest of the quotes. But at that point, they went ahead and went with us. They decided that we, we had proven our point and they were willing to take this risk for these possible benefits that they were seeing. And we signed the biggest deal that our company had ever made. It was the largest individual telephone system that we had ever sold. It was the largest dollar sale we'd ever sold. Um, and uh, that felt really good, particularly when they gave us that 50% down check and that was the largest check we'd ever gotten. Um, this is a good feeling. I recommend it highly. We uh, then faced the hard reality of now we need to start building a system. And we went back to them and said, we'd like to re-engineer this. We don't want to build what we quoted. We'd like to build it the right way. And they were, became very interested in that. We want to do IP trunking over your wide area network. And I want to give them all the credit in the world. Grand Crown had a, a, a really powerful wide area network. In their Branson, their primary business locations, they had uh, 10 megabit uh, metro ethernet between most locations. Where they didn't have that, they would have 100 megabit fiber connections. They had a 100 fi uh, megabit fiber connection to Springfield, Missouri, 50 miles away. This made it really easy to send a lot of calls and trunk these systems all together. Now, uh, their farthest away uh, locations, they had an MPLS network. Uh, that would be in, in um, uh, uh, Tennessee and Mississippi, and that also worked quite well. So we redesigned with, with their help and input and, and uh, uh, with them planning a, an all IP uh, routed network and started, uh, started doing rollouts. These rollouts, the plan was to start from the outside and work our way into that core in Branson. We'd already done Springfield, which had been a standalone, and the two locations in, in Tennessee, which were standalones, we prepared phone switches for them, pre-programmed them, pre-programmed the phone sets, we printed the paper labels, put them on the phones, they were marked with the people's names, and we did something that we've done since successfully also, but it was the first time it was a little spooky. We handed these phone systems over to this customer. They took them to Tennessee and installed them. Now, that was a little risky, we thought, but it went surprisingly well. Have you ever heard anybody say, I'd rather be lucky than smart? <sighs> I'd rather be lucky and smart, but I'll take what I can get. In this case, we were lucky. The customer went there and brought in that system, mounted it, plugged it into his network. They'd given me VPN access. Again, this customer was very good to work with and that they gave us all the access that we needed to really have an opportunity for success. So I'm watching the system. I watch the server come up. Great, log in. Great. We need to attach a soft phone to that. And then phones started coming online one after another. And I watched that for a little bit. And I just dialed one of them just as it popped up. It rings a couple times and I hear their telecom manager, Danny Henderson, pick up the phone and say, hello. He wasn't expecting that call. And I said, hey, Danny, it's John. John. Yeah, John Johnson. How'd you call me? On the phone. <laughs> How did you know I was at this phone? I said, Danny, I'm watching you. I'm always watching you. <laughs> oh, after he, after he finally quit laughing at me and says, okay, now, how did you do that? Well, I watched the phones pop up. Uh, it was a simple matter to guess that you had to be pretty close to one of them that you just plugged in and booted up. Um, he says, yeah, but you know, I haven't connected the phone lines. I said, well, we're talking over the network. Remember, network routing. So 
He did the same thing that we did in, in Springfield. He put new phones next to old phones. Servers are mounted next to each other and just moved the trunks from one to the other. The old phone stopped ringing, the new one started. Everything was pre-programmed, worked the first try. Again, lucky, smart, I'll take lucky if that's all I get. Um, and the routing was all preset. They were able to four-digit dial Branson uh, by passing through that Cisco. They were able to four-digit dial Springfield. Um, they'd never had that ability. And Danny made the comment, and I, I should tell you that Danny Henderson is a very experienced uh, uh, telecom uh, uh, manager. He uh, has installed many telephone systems uh, professionally over the years and was a traditional telephone man, a uh, good old tip and ring guy. He told me that he had never installed a phone system and had it worked like that before. Right out of the box, pre-programmed, ready to go. We've now made that a goal with every phone system that we put out that they should be pre-programmed in the lab and be working and tested thoroughly before they go on site. The, the proof, though, would be in the pudding. He had another one to install. <sighs> We've been lucky uh, uh, that day. We were hoping to be lucky the next. And once again, we were very fortunate. Plugged that in, and it jumped up and, and ran at the, the other uh, location in Tennessee. Um, that finished off their, uh, something that they had started years before, trying to get all their, their f locations integrated. They'd never had it before. Now they're going, and, and, and we're feeling pretty, pretty good, feeling maybe a, a little cocky. That's eh, always a bad idea. We went ahead and, and began trying to roll out the other locations, and there were quite a few. The, uh, uh, the goal was then to replace the Cisco call manager, which we were using as the pass-through interface. Uh, they had a welcome center uh, in, in Branson that we uh, had a, a number of Cisco phones hanging off of it. We, uh, we uh, uh, got, got that sys location up. They had uh, their sales center, uh, which is a very important uh, function for them. Um, uh, we brought, brought that one up. Um, the town center, the town center. <laughs> The day we were supposed to install their, new, their uh, new phone switch at that location and replace their 11C, a couple things didn't come together quite right. We didn't feel like it was ready to pull the trigger, um, uh, so we didn't do it. That night, the facility was struck by lightning, and it blasted that 11C. I mean, blasted it. Smoke came out of it. It, did, <laughs> it was never going to operate again. I might mention that Branson, Missouri is a very lightning-prone facility. Uh, the whole, whole town has a problem with this. It's uh, on mountaintops, um, uh, a, a rock strata that really creates a problem for, with getting a good deep ground. So we blasted their, phones, the, their old phone system. Once again, lucky or smart, that day we, we had not been able to install our new phone system. That's why it didn't get hit. <laughs> um, and when the customer was completely out of service, we said, oh, well, we have your brand new one right here. Let's put it in today. Brought them up, and they were very, very happy. Now, things are really going forward. We're, we've been eating this out from the outside in. We're getting down to that core, the, their final locations. And things seem to be going great. We're, we, think, uh, we think we've really got it made. We're going to just plow through this. We're going uh, we're, we're to do the finale and it's going to be wonderful. And then everything changed for us. On May 22nd of 2011, Sunday at 5.34 in the afternoon, an EF5 tornado struck Joplin, Missouri. It was a uniquely powerful tornado, uniquely destructive. There were, there were over 7,000 homes destroyed around 300 businesses, five schools. Damages are estimated to be in the area of $2.8 billion. Uh, our city is basically bankrupt and will be for a long time to come. The destruction was tremendous. And there were 158 people died. Now, I3 Technology Group, our company, was very fortunate. Our offices were outside of the tornado's path. We weren't destroyed. Our employees were very fortunate, um, blessed. 
we, uh, we didn't, uh, none of us lost anybody, none of us lost our homes, except for one employee did lose her home. She was able to survive by getting in crawl space under her house and came out unscathed, um, but her house was a total loss. But so many people lost so much. And uh, our customers were hurting. They were hurting bad. Uh, we had customers that the buildings were completely destroyed. We had customers that their buildings were uninhabitable. We had customers that didn't know what they were going to do. And it was time to step up. Now, the whole world took, uh, paid attention. Uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you remember the, these events. People came to our aid from all over. Um, and Grand Crown really stood up for us. They told us to go ahead and do what we needed to do. Come back to them. And we went, ahead and went ahead and started helping our customers. And there were, there were a lot of needs. We went and pulled telephone systems out of piles of rubble, repaired them and fixed them, and got customers going in temporary locations. Uh, uh, did some kind of unique things. And then it was time to, uh, as a community, come together and, and help our school system. Uh, many of you may remember uh, the R8 school system in Joplin, Missouri. We'd lost five school buildings, uh, including uh, our high school. And, uh, but they set, we set a goal that we were going to have school open on time. Uh, we were going to be, uh, be in place for uh, opening in August. So four buildings were found that could be revamped and turned into schools. And <laughs> there, were, uh, there was a warehouse, uh, an old drug warehouse. There was uh, uh, an industrial speculation building, a big butler type building. And, uh, <laughs> and in fact, a department store in the local mall. And we converted all these to schools. Uh, we were, uh, as the, the, the telephone systems provider to the R8 school system, we were uh, integral in all four of those, uh, those uh, jobs simultaneously. We were one of the few vendors that worked on all of them. Um, and uh, in 60 days, we put four asterisk systems in all four locations, trunked them together, and brought them up. Um, there's still uh, an awful lot of talk in the construction community about what it took to make that happen. We, uh, uh, the one facility was 135,000 man hours in 60 days. That place was like a beehive. Uh, I later discovered while I was in there working, my son was laying tile in another part of the building and we never bumped into each other. Um, but we brought, the, brought that together, school started, and Joplin is, is recovering. Uh, we are moving forward and we're very thankful to everybody that helped us. And that takes us back to Grand Crown, who were so accommodating. We're now down to the final location. And this is a, a challenging location. This is their headquarters. This is um, the last uh, 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 big analog extension and uh, implementation. And I should say again, these analog implementations were kind of unique. Um, there was one that was uh, 512 analog ports and the other one of uh, 282. Now, these are large arrays and there, weren't, there just wasn't very, very many systems that could produce that kind of bulk. Zorcom has had the answer. Their USB, USB connected Astro Banks allowed us to really stack them up and create large arrays that worked really well. Now, um, this is one of the real benefits of, of Zorcom and Astro Bank. We, we put these in and we brought them up and cut them over and finally finished this system. The, the customer ended up with a system that incorporated uh, 192 IP phone sets, 928 analog extensions uh, for a total of 10,016 physical extensions with other dialable extensions uh, uh, for uh, specialized ring groups and, and um, um, ACD groups, conference rooms, uh, the altogether 1,100 dialable extensions. Um, they have 230 call channels in 10 PRIs and 10 CO lines and 2,500 DID numbers. Um, this system is working day in, day out. The customer counts on it and they are very pleased with the results. We are too. The thing that they are most pleased with is the $100,000 annual savings by turning off all those point-to-point -point PRIs, the reduction in, in their um, uh, uh, long-distance costs, and, uh, uh, of course, the 
lower cost of ownership that you experience with Asterisk every time for maintenance and ongoing support. And with that, I'm happy to open this up for any questions you may have. Oh, come on, I was not that complete by a long shot. Yes. In fact, uh, we the only redundancy we used was internally, and that was on on power supplies, redundant power supplies, and RAID one on the drive systems. The customer had never had a, any real level of redundancy before, and really didn't consider it critical. So. Um, uh, while we are a firm believer in, the, in uh, Zorcom's Twin Star technology, um, they were not interested. Though we have had some occasions where they would lose a, a trunk, and they were very uh, pleased and impressed with our ability to say, well, do you want those people to be able to make phone calls? Well, yeah. Well, let me just route their calls over to this uh, other location that still has trunks online. I'm sorry? Oh, virtualization. No, well, no we, we did not do virtualization. In fact, I mentioned at the beginning of, of the presentation that we come from a traditional background. We, we are an Avaya Nortel partner. Um, and we're a Nortel part, channel partner for a long time. And I have to admit that that colors our thinking in, in really every implementation we do. We come from that old tip and ring background. Um, the transition to Asterisk was um, a, a major step for us. Um, virtualization uh, and, and, and many of those things we just haven't even moved into. We're still, we're installing Asterisk the way we installed Nortel. Uh, it was a successful model that we had, had done an awful lot of and have continued doing it that way. But, but I do realize that virtualization, and, and we're, we're, we're doing virtualization in our office, uh, that that is, uh, uh, a, a major thrust of where Asterisk is going. But the customer wasn't yet interested. <laughs> now, <clears throat> my diagramming ability is eh, but uh, we ended up with, a, I thought, a, a very interesting call flow uh, using uh, uh, some servers with uh, multiple PRIs providing dial tone to other locations over, uh, over the IP trunks. Alrighty, thank you all for your kind attention and patience today.